This is Canada's newest summer stock theater. <laughs> so thank you very much for being here. Uh, Douglas, would you stand up? Douglas is the director of this show. And <laughs> Glad you come, Douglas. So anyway, I guess you did. I wanted to say a few words about Lindsay Avair. Uh, we seem to like Lindsay Avair. The last show we did here was Kimberly Akimbo, uh, which was uh, Lindsay Avair production, or play or play, I should say. And I understand they're going to make a movie of, of that play now. Uh, a whole lot of things. Rabbit Hole, you may know, is a big one. There are so many awards and plays, musicals, that he's been involved in that it would, uh, well, you can see my wife is kind of compulsive obsessive that this was, you know. So go to Wikipedia and look up uh, David Lindsay of Barrett's on your program, and you'll learn a lot about his work. There was one thing here that he said about his work that I wanted to lift out. Lindsay Abair describes his plays as centering around, and this is a quote, outsiders in search of clarity. So that may be a thing you want to keep in mind for this production. Uh, he lives in Connecticut, I understand, uh, comes from South Boston, uh, grew up there, uh, went to some very prestigious schools in playwriting and other things. He writes songs, he writes lyrics, and uh, he's uh, teaching as well as doing all of these other things, writes some novels. I don't know how he has time to uh, do such good work, as you will see in a few minutes. Now, when uh, what these lights are up here now represent house lights. And when those house lights go down, you must imagine that it's totally dark in here. It's totally dark. <laughs> That's what happens when you're the newest summer stock theater in Canada. So imagine that, and then uh, when the stage lights come up, you will understand that too. So I guess those are all the notes that I need to bring to you. And uh, thank you again very much for coming to see our production. We really encourage you to become subscribers, members of The Space Between. We not only have a theater company, we also have a film unit, which is headed up by Ned Cordery, who is doing our filming today for this show. We have a lot of other kinds of events related to the performing arts. So, with that, thank you. trying to do to me. Where have you been? I was out. Shit. You can't be waiting up like that sitting in the dark. There's heart disease in my family. Do you know what time it is? I could have dropped dead. I get spooked real easy. It's ten past twelve. And I got a clock, Benny. I don't need you telling me what time it is. You were supposed to be home at midnight. My train got stuck. We had to wait for the signal to change. Ah. That old chestnut. You think I'm lying? Wouldn't it be the first time? Ten minutes. Cut me some slack. How did you get in here anyway? You left the window unlocked. What window? I live on the sixth floor. I came up the fire escape. What? Are you retarded? What if you fell? No, baby. I'm like a cat. <laughs> this ain't legit, Benny. What ain't? The way you do things. All the time you're doing shit like this. It ain't on the level. Sure it is. None of my other parole officers ever did this. Did what? <laughs> Break into my apartment. Oh, come on. It's creepy. You climbing in my window, waiting in here with all the lights off? What if I didn't realize it was you? What if I freaked out and maced you or stuck a knife in your gut or something? Well, for one thing, 
that would probably qualify as a parole violation. <laughs> you want to check up on me? You wait on my doorstep. I don't want to come home and find you laying all over my furniture. I don't even know you hardly. Besides, don't you need a warrant or something to come in here like that? Well, well, let's not get all hung up on warrants and legalities, okay? We're talking about your curfew right now and your blatant disregard of it. My train got stuck. Then you need to allow for setbacks then, because trains get stuck all the time. And if you're late, then I'm obligated to report that to the parole board. You understand? I'm their conduit. Uh-huh, right. Conduit. That's terrific. I'm sorry, but late is late. Midnight is midnight. You gotta hop in your pumpkin and get your ass home. Otherwise, you're going back to jail, Connie. And I know you don't want to go back to jail. What's that? Oh, that's a tort. A what? A tort. A tomato basil tort. Mm -hmm. It's a little like a uh, quiche. What's it doing here? I made it, in case you were hungry when you got home. <laughs> you made a tort in my kitchen? Yeah. And you carried all the ingredients of the fire escape? That's right. And nobody stopped you? No. Fucking neighborhood, I'm telling you. Hey, assholes! You see a guy crawling my window with bags of food? Call the frickin' cops! What is wrong with you people? What's the matter? You don't like tort? What I don't like, Benny, is you coming up into my house and busting out my pot. It does look good, though. Right? I'm hungry, too. I'm gonna get a fork. There's some porcini mushrooms in there too. I don't know if you like porcini or not. I like portobello better, but that's okay. I hope it's still warm. Mmm. It's good, right? I actually went to culinary school for a few months. That's what I wanted to do, but that didn't work out, so. You should go back. Nah, I don't think they let me. There was an episode with the grease fire that got a little crazy, so. Besides, I'm not sure where that school is anymore. They had to relocate. <laughs> That's too bad. This is some tasty tort. <laughs> so, you gonna report me for being late? I don't know, where were you? My cousin's house. She lives in Flatbush, and you know that Q trains for shit. She was having a party or something? <clears throat> no, no party. You trying to trick me, Benny? No, I'm not trying to trick you. You know I don't go to parties no more. I was just watching videos with Tina and her kids. I lost track of time. You ever see Spy Kids, the original? No. It's a good movie. Who else was there? That's it. Just me and Tina and the kids. No guys in the house? <sighs> no, there were no guys. Her neighbor Raul popped in to borrow some tinfoil, but... What's he look like? Who, Raul? <laughs> I don't know what he is. He looked like a guy. Just a regular... You know, like a normal person. <laughs> Why are you asking me what he looked like? Because I need to have a sense of the type of the people you're spending your time with. <laughs> I didn't spend no time with him. He borrowed some foil. He was there for a minute and then went home. He's just some old guy from next door. Oh, uh, okay, then he's an old man? Yeah. Why, you didn't say that. Because I didn't understand what you were asking me. What's he look like, you want to know? What the hell's that? Maybe next time I'll take a picture for you. Hey, come on, don't get mouthy. You know I gotta ask this stuff. No, I don't. I don't know that. None of my other parole officers ever asked me the goofy shit you asked me. I don't like it. <laughs> How about the tort? The tort, I don't mind. Next time, though, do portobello. <laughs> Honey, there's something I have to tell you. And I yeah. just... Connie! Hey! Hey, Connie, you up there? Are you expecting somebody? What? I'm not allowed to have company now? Well, that depends on who it is, doesn't it? He ain't a convicted felon, if that's what you're asking. Connie! You're done, right? Did your little surprise pop in? Gave me a good talking to? Oh, you're not gonna give me the bus rush now, are ya? Connie, you awake? We're all awake, shithead! <laughs> you know how to ring a bell? A buzzer's busted! Why don't you mind your business? How about I come down there instead and cut off your head, motherfucker? <laughs> That's Mr. Dugan. He's always threatening to cut off somebody's head. 
<laughs> Connie! Is this guy your boyfriend? Come on, Benny, you gotta go. But I want to meet this gentleman caller of yours. You got some real boundary problems, you know it. Yes, yes I do. You're not the first person to say so. <laughs> hey, how you doing? How am I doing? My throat's sore, man. Let me up. Let you up? I don't even know who you are. It's me, man, Cliff. How can I help you, Cliff? Is Connie up there? Yeah, Cliff. Oh, She's I'm here. The, the thing is, Cliff, Connie has a curfew. Well, you her father. No, I'm not her father, Cliff. Let me up there. Do you got some business here with Connie? Yeah, I got some business. Now, throw down the key. Yeah, let him up. <laughs> I gotta work at 6 a.m. Oh, what? Why are you lying, Mr. Dugan? You've been out on disability three months. You don't have no work to go to. Connie, that you? Yeah, it's oh, me. Throw down the key. I'm trying to sleep. You ain't trying to sleep either. You over there watching the Spice Channel. I can see it from here. Why don't you buy some shades, you dirty pig? <laughs> Connie! Wait a minute. Hand me that sock. <laughs> Okay, Cliff. Here it comes. You got it? It got stuck on the telephone wire. It's hanging there. <laughs> Shit. Hand me a shoe. <laughs> For what? I got to try to knock that sock off the wire. <laughs> Why don't you use your own shoe? You crazy? I just bought these. You got it? Man, no. Hand me your other shoe. <laughs> okay, Cliff, now look out this time. You got it now? Yeah, got it. All right then, come on up. So what? You stay in now? I gotta get my shoes back, don't I? Well, don't go cross-examining my friend. Just get your shoes and go home. Connie, you seem to forget that this is my job. No, nah, this ain't your job. This is harassment. You think I'm not gonna report all this? Breaking and entering and cooking torts? That ain't right. I've been through the system, remember? And ain't none of this shit kosher. Just tell me this guy's not your dealer. Now come on, why you gotta be like that? You know I have to ask. Didn't I say I spent the night watching movies? Why you gotta bring up drugs? That's just tacky. You just sullied a nice night with my cousins. I'm sorry. You should be. You need to get yourself a partner. Because you can't be playing good cop, bad cop by yourself. You only confuse people. <laughs> I confuse you? Yeah, you confuse me. Well, the feeling's only mutual. See, I don't even know what that's supposed to mean. You're cryptic, you know that word? Yeah, I'll look it up when I go home. <laughs> <laughs> well, you should. You might find a little picture of yourself in there. It'll say cryptic. See this guy. <laughs> Who is it? It's me, man. Cliff. Who do you think it is? Damn, those stairs just about kill me. <laughs> this is my parole officer. For real? You didn't commit any infractions, I hope. What brings you out tonight, Cliff? You don't have to answer his questions. You ain't on parole. Connie and I have a date. Huh, a date. Interesting. Where are you kids headed? We ain't headed no place. It's an indoor date. Ah, an indoor date. See that? He tried to trick you into saying we were going out. Crafty. <laughs> You're not a bad influence, are you, Cliff? No, man. I'm wholesome. Good, because you know, I gotta look out for this girl. You ain't gotta look out for me. You ain't gotta worry about me. I treat Connie real nice. 
Don't I, baby? You done now? Almost. There's just one last thing. It's been a couple of months, after all. A couple months since what? It's part of the program. You know that. You kidding me? Random test. Right! Except this don't feel so random to me. What's the big deal? You're clean, right? Yeah, I'm clean. All right, then no worries. Just give me a little pee, and I'll be lost. Except I don't have to pee at the moment. That's OK, because I can wait. Give me the fucking cup. Damn. <laughs> I'm used to that. I get a lot of hostility on my job. Yeah, me too. What do you do? I work at Aubon Pan. Customers there are fucking animals, man. So, uh, how do you guys know each other? We met at church. <laughs> I didn't know Connie went to church. Not church, church. The basement. Oh. That's where the meetings are. I see. N.A. Right. I've been clean now eight months. Congratulations. And, uh, how long have you been with Connie? What? Connie, you I just start dating her? I ain't dating her, man. Oh, I thought you said this was a date. Yeah, a date like we said, a date to hang out. I just come up here to play cards. Hmm. I see. Besides, I got a boyfriend. I can't be fooling around with Connie. He'd kill me. <laughs> <laughs> I see. See, Saturday nights, Connie and I stay up late, playing cards together. That's all. So we don't go out and get all fucked up the way we used to, in trouble and whatnot. It's like a buddy system. Right. That's good. That's a good system. You thought I was screwing her. <laughs> I wasn't sure. You were jealous of me. No. Yeah, you were. You were jealous of me. That's some funny shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? What? You don't look how I pictured. What do you mean? I mean the way she described you. She described me? You know how I pictured. What do you mean? Yeah. She didn't do too good job though. She said attractive. Really? That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> really. <laughs> Attractive. I have the beholder, I guess. She seemed upset. Yeah, she is. I gotta stop doing that. Making people upset? Yeah. Yeah, well, we all have our habits to break. Yes. Yes, we do. Maybe you should get in a program. <laughs> Something to make you stop doing whatever it is you keep doing. And what is it that I keep doing? How am I supposed to know I just met you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, a program's good. Structure and whatnot. Yeah, well, I don't really think they have a program like that. Oh, I guess I do. You'd be surprised. My cousin couldn't stop getting tattoos. He was like totally addicted. <laughs> For real, same as me, except it was body art. Crazy skulls, devils, evil pixies, whatever. All over his whole body. And he found a program. Made him stop. So, they got something for him. I bet you could dig something up. You should Google that shit, you know? Yeah. Now get it! Hey, come on now. No, your duties are done. Now go home. Are you mad? Nah, no, I ain't mad. Yes, yes you are. Why are you mad? Your little power trip. Cliff comes up here, so you gotta start flapping your dick around. Connie, that was a misunderstanding. He thought I wanted to get with you. <laughs> I don't care what he thought. Don't be defending him. I wasn't. Listen. <laughs> I gotta tell you something. Well, tell me some other time, because I got company right now. It's why I came up here tonight. It's why I made you that tort. You made this? Looks good. Go home, Benny. Hold on, Connie. Let me just... It's okay. Pretend I ain't even here. 
<laughs> I'm not really good at this kind of stuff. And I should have just come out with it right off the start. I know you ain't asking me out. Please, God, don't let him ask me out. Look, I've been having feelings for you for a few weeks now. You could tell, right? Yeah, she could tell. <laughs> and that's a big no-no in the department. As you can imagine, a lot of conflict of interest. So I went in the front office today, and I complained about it. I was real upfront with them. So naturally, they took me off your case. What do you mean? I mean, they're going to assign you a new parole officer. You're not my parole officer? No. Since what time? Since... <laughs> I don't know. Noon, I guess. But the point is, now we're free to, you know, hang out or whatever. I don't even know if you're open to all that. So but... wait! You came up here and broke into my apartment and questioned me and threatened me and you're not even assigned to my case no more? And right in front of my friend, you made me piss in a cup! Clearly that was a misjudgment! Oh! <laughs> Connie! No, Connie! I have been with some sick people in my day, but you beat them all. You up here waiting for me? Intimidate me? Saying I'm gonna go back to jail? Holding me hostage in my own apartment so you can... What? Ask me out? Tell me you got a crush on me? That's smooth. You're a real Romeo, you know it. Sorry. Yeah, you're sorry. You're sorry you got a face full of piss. <laughs> Look, this was stupid. I know. I do stupid things sometimes. I just wanted to... I didn't know how else to talk to you. You call me up. You say, hey, how you doing? Like a normal person. You don't know how to be a normal person. You do that. And take your nasty twerk, bitch. <laughs> Tasted like dog shit anyways. I was just being polite. <laughs> Get out! <laughs> Someday, maybe? It's not like you've never done anything stupid. Flip the card. I really think you should call him, you know? In a few weeks or something? <laughs> maybe? I think you ought to. Because it's hard to find a man who can cook. <laughs> 